Welcome to Crafty Hints. I'm Chantel. I want to say a special welcome to my new and previous subscribers. If you're new here, I hope that you'll subscribe and join us. Today, I took part in the Try It Tuesday Challenge. Now, this means we try to do a DIY that we saw on another channel. Sammy from Unicorn Dust Designs is the host. If you have not visited her channel, take a look below at the link and head on over after you watch the playlist because she has some awesome DIYs. And a new friend, Rebecca Virginia DIY. She also has some amazing DIYs. Look at this. I found this rope at Walmart. It was on clearance for 809 and it's like 90 feet. And I got those three little planters from the Dollar Tree. This rope is really close to the nautical rope. So what I did was I started with a little bit of hot glue and I'm going to go around in a circle here. I was inspired by Shannon at the Daily DIYer. She had made one like this and I'm like, oh, I got to try that. I have made a whole nother like bead tiered tray series this last weekend what that was released. So I will put that up above right there and that way you can click on it and open it in another window so that you can watch that afterwards. There's even a whole playlist. You'd love it. So I just keep going round and round here. And, you know, just add a little bit of glue here and there. And when I get back up to the top then, you want to just keep coiling it in tight. And I'm just getting there. Somehow it had lost the footage, so I pulled the rope back out and I'm doing it again to show you here. You're just coiling it smaller and smaller and trying to fit it in and totally just closing up the top there. I probably could have snipped a little bit more off but I really want it to be nice and tight up top so that you don't see any of that planter. Just keep twisting that up tight. Make sure you get enough glue. So yes, you could definitely use a Dollar Tree's nautical rope if you don't have other rope. It's definitely a neat one. I think it's such a nice finish. I used a little bit of vinyl to make the little door. So I peeled that off. You could use whatever you want. I made a smaller one before and I used a bottle cap. So you can use whatever you want. And this is some of the wired jute that I'm just going around that vinyl to make the door and gluing it on. As always, all of the supplies will be linked down below. So I will give you a list and anything I have a link to, I will put that link for you also. All right, isn't that adorable? Now I got these little bees off of Amazon and so I'm just taking off the little sticker and sticking them on because they are pretty darn sticky. You could definitely put hot glue on the back of these, but they have stayed on there since I attached them. Aren't they cute? Again, if you like these, you'll love the other ones. How cute is that? Thanks, Shannon, for the inspiration. For this project, you'll need three five-gallon paint sticks, and I cut those down to 10 inches, and one of them I left the handle on. And that's the one I'm going to just take my diamond file and file the end. And then I cut the end off of one of the other paint sticks to match up for the middle. We are making a rolling pin. 
And I didn't use any hot glue in this. This is all my Gorilla Wood glue and it works really well. So in between each one, I just use a little bit of that Gorilla Glue. I really like these stir sticks from the Home Depot. They have such a nice wood grain to them. And so I'm not gonna put a super dark stain on this when I do. I just really liked it and it'll match that uh, measurement cutting board that I made before. My inspiration for this was from Jazz at DIY Home and Crafts. She made a cute rolling pin, so it inspired this one. Now you could definitely round those ends even more if you wanted to. Now I just take this and after this fully dried, it didn't take too long, I just scooted that right off of there and you know gave it a sand around the edges a bit and then also just took a sanding block and sanded any extra glue so that you wouldn't see it with my stain. Then I painted the handles with some chalk paint. This is just black ink by Waverly and I just do both of those all the way around it. And next I took my Cricut and you could definitely use your own letters or a paint marker or however you want to put your message on here but the letters would be easy enough to find your favorite font at any craft store. So what I spelled out is happiness is homemade. Next, I use this home decor wax. I picked that up at Hobby Lobby. I put it on a wet wipe so it goes on a little bit lighter. You don't have to come back and rub it off. It just rubs right in the wood and you don't have to take off any extra. Then I decided to use a little bit of my other wax that I have that's Craft Smart. I thought it was a little bit darker so I could do the edges of it. Then I took my sanding block and went over the letters so it took off just a little bit of the shine. Next, I wanted to put just a little bit of buffalo check around the handles of the rolling pin. And all that I could find was this larger width ribbon, so I folded it in half a couple times. I think this might have even been from their fall from the Dollar Tree. So I have that and I just fold it to the length that I need and did that around both sides. Pretty simple. Next I just tied a bow and that'll go up in the corner. This, you know, it takes a little bit of time but I think this one was worth it. So cute. And here it is on the back of my stove. I think this would be pretty painted white also. To start out, you'll want two of these from the Dollar Tree. I tore off the flower that was there and then just scraped off the remnants. Now I'm taking off the back and the hanger. Next, you just want to pull the prongs out of one frame and leave them on the bottom frame. And then you just want to match them up and make sure they line up well. Now I started by just hot gluing these on, but you will see that I realize that it's a little bit slippery and I probably need my Gorilla Glue. So I started back over with that. Now this frame was inspired by, or this tray actually, was inspired by Fanny from Creations by Favi. So I knew that this was one that I need to do for Try It Tuesday. 
So I start back out with my hot glue and a little bit of the Gorilla Glue. And I'm just putting these about a pinky apart. And it works out. I think that I probably should have gone over it with a little bit of sandpaper. They would have stuck better. So I suggest if you do this project that you do give it a good once or twice over with your sandpaper and it'll make them stay much easier. Next, I took these out and gave it a couple coats of spray paint. To get in between and everything, I just thought that would be the easiest. And then I went through with the hot glue and the Gorilla Glue again. I wasn't gonna make you sit through me doing that all over. Well, the bottom, since it had the prongs on the back, I decided that I need to cover this up. So I'm taking some white cardstock and my Craft Elmer's glue stick, and I'm just gluing this on there. Fold it over and trim it off. And next, I'm going to use this tissue paper from the Dollar Tree and Mod Podge. So I just go across in small rows and press it down. I'm sorry, I didn't realize my camera wasn't recording. I think it's starting to have a problem with this card. So I just press that down. Isn't this the prettiest tissue paper? Oh my goodness. I just saw Crafts by Corey use it as well. And my goodness, I love it. All right, so I just continue to do this a little bit at a time to make sure it's nice and smooth. The cardstock doesn't love it, but it worked out just fine. And that's the last row. So you'll want to just let this bottom layer dry before we put a top coat on. Now that it's dry, I just put a whole layer across the top. And you wanna go in one direction so that you don't see a bunch of different strokes. I did use a matte Mod Podge. And now I'll let that dry. Next, I just took up a little bit of the extra and then I take this diamond file. It's just a nail file I got from the Dollar Tree. It works well to take off those edges. Now this is just some Waverly chalk paint in mineral and I'm just going to dry brush this to distress it a bit. This just makes it, you know, look a little bit aged and I thought it was just a little bit that it needed. And it does go in between nicely. So I use a little bit of mineral and then I'll go back in, as you see here, with a little bit of ivory. So I just go back over, you know, the top of the mineral. And there's a couple spots where beads might have moved. So I decide to go back in with a little bit of ivory and just touch up those spots. Now I want to give the this tray just you know some legs so I put these on a skewer and just painted them quick and now they'll just go on the corners of this tray you could brush that with the mineral also if you wanted to but I really don't think they'll be seen much so just a light coating of that white worked well and here it is how pretty is that? If you like this, please hit the like button and also subscribe and hit that bell so that you know each time I release a new video. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to go to the playlist linked below in the description box. Thank you. Have a great day.